this web tutorial, we're going to go ahead and discuss some of the things that you're going to see in the Excel Module 2 projects. So some of the first things that you're going to run into is actually changing some of the document properties. So um, let's go ahead and go to the Page Layout tab. And on the Page Layout tab, it could ask you to change the theme of the document, and you have a lot to choose from. Let's go ahead and just choose Gallery. Also, you have colors here, so if you wanted to change the, the colors, um, you could do that. Now, the reason that you would want to play around with these settings is for the reason that you want to have uniformity in your document. So all the colors are the same, all the fonts, everything just it flows throughout the document. So that's the reason you would change the themes. Um, you also have the margins right here on the page layout tab. So we have normal, wide, you can do narrow. All of that's an option. You also have the orientation here um, to change it from up and down to left to right. Um, something else you might need to do is set the page margins. I'm sorry, the, set the print area. So in order to do that, so you would select the, the range that you would need. And then you would go to print area and just set print area. You also have the spelling features, and that would be on the review. So you, if you needed to do spell check, you could. You would click spell check. It would document uh, check the document for any misspellings. You could also use the the source here um, if you needed to change one of the words instead of total. Maybe you wanted to do something else that sounded a little bit different. And then um, we also have headers, just like you have in Word and in PowerPoint. You have headers that you can put on this document. So that's on the insert tab. And you're going to want to click header and footer. Now, um, it changes the view of the document, so you can get a little bit uh, frazzled if you're looking at it. But um, you can close out of this easily. You have the left, the center, and the right header. You also have that at the, the bottom in your footer section. You have the left, center, and the right there as well. So, um, And if you're here and you're not sure on your special tab, you can click go to footer and it will drag you down there. Now it could have you type some text, it could have you put um, page numbers um, here, maybe you want to put current date or sheet name, you could do all of that in the file. Um, then you want to go to close it out, you want to click out of that um, the header and footer, and then um, you can go to view <clears throat> and then click uh, the normal right here and that will bring you back to the to the the custom view that you're used to. You can also change your view settings from down here as well. We've talked about adjusting um, the auto fit column and, and row, but there's another way that you could do it. If you, if you were given a specific um, set of uh, specific size that you needed to change it to, you could do that. Instead of 24.13, you could key in 25, and that would be an exact setting, and I've seen that on the certification test. Let's go ahead and talk about um, some font things, some shell cell shading. Um, <clears throat> so if I wanted to change this revenue detail to red, I could. I could also change it to other colors. But then the other thing is the, the cell fill. And if you click the little paint bucket drop down, you could change it to an orange. Uh, just some of the cool things that you uh, could use and you'll probably need to know for the project. And some of the other things is changing the cell formatting. Now, <clears throat> the first thing is you have the number here. You could do percentage. You could do uh, the decimal. We'll go ahead and change this to, to the accounting. Um, notice it puts the dollar sign. You have the decimal places. You can change the decimal places from here. And then, of course, if that's not what you want, you can click that numbers dialog box and go through a bunch of things. And we're going to go ahead and do that for this right here. You have this date here, and I'm just going to delete that first half of this so that we just have the date. Now, um, let's say I don't like how that's formatted. So if I go to the numbers dialog box and go to date here, I have a whole bunch of different settings that I could choose from. Maybe I want the day and I want all this other information. If I click that, notice that it goes ahead and it changes that for me. So that's a cool little cell feature that um, to change it and make it look a little bit different. Another thing that you might see is um, putting a border around or in part of the cell. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these cells and I'm going to go ahead and in the font group you have this right here. Now there's a lot of different settings. I often will use the alt border but if I wanted to select I could do any of these. 
but notice that how now it, it adds that black border around every cell. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, some formulas. So um, we're, I encourage you to use the insert function here and then from there type in things like sum. If we wanted to use sum hit go, it'll pull up all your sum like functions. And then of course we can click and drag that down and it will sum that up for us. And then we have the average. Let's go ahead and put average here. And again, it's down here because it's one of my frequently used ones, but if not, type it in up at the top and then you can select that. And I'm gonna select this, but I want you to caution. I'm only selecting B6 to B12. Notice I'm not selecting this B13 because B13 is not really a part of my, my uh, data. That's just a, a, the sum that we added up. And if I throw this number in there, it's actually gonna throw off all of my numbers. So be careful when you're doing your project that you don't select a cell that you shouldn't. Make sure you carefully read the instructions on that. And then some of the other formulas that um, you'll see on this is things like the max for this one. So we'll type in max. And what that does is it, it takes the highest number in a group of or a range of cells. And so that, that was the highest number. And then min would be the opposite. So we'll go ahead and select that. And it pulls the smallest number in that group. Now, so we've we've put in some formulas. Another thing it might do is it's going to ask you to manually hand key a formula without using a predefined function. So that's not too difficult to do. Um, if I, I'm just going to put my uh, my uh, cursor here and select this cell. I'm going to go ahead and start a formula. Now, in order to start a formula, you need to key in the equal sign. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cell, and I could type this cell in, but I'm just going to go ahead and select. I'm going to hit the subtract, and then I'm going to select this one. And it's going to give me the difference between those two. So, And that wasn't too difficult. All I did was I hit the equal sign to start a, a, uh, the formula, and then I selected my first cell, and then hit the subtract key, and keyed in my second cell. That's a manual formula if it asks you to do that. Not too difficult. And I can do the same thing here if I wanted to do this divided by this number, you'd get the 0 0.02. So that's another manual formula that you could do. Let's talk about conditional formatting. Let's go ahead and carry this out all the way across. And what I just did was I did the drag fill. I just selected this green little box on the bottom of the cell and carried it over. And notice that it copied my formula all the way over, filling in C here, D, column D, column E. It, it changes all that for me, and that's because that's a uh, relative reference. And so we, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these numbers here. And what I'm gonna do is tell Excel to look for something and then do something based upon um, whether it finds that or not. So we're gonna go ahead and on the home tab, we're gonna do conditional formatting. And we're gonna go ahead and select a new rule. Now you have a lot of features in here, um, but for this, we're gonna go ahead format only cells that contain. And for this, let's just go ahead and in and, and the cell value, we're gonna go, uh, let's do greater than, and what we'll do is 90,000. And then in here is our formatting. Right now I have nothing set, but I'm gonna go ahead and click format. You might need to change a fill and we'll do black and we'll go ahead and we'll jump to the font. Let's go ahead and make it white to really make it pop and we'll click okay. Notice that all of those numbers are greater than 90,000. And then finally, another cool feature that you could use. If you look at the cell right here, you have uh, the POP, that's the first three letters from the left on this product name. And then you have the TFT, that's the first um, letter of each one of those. And then you have the 001, which is this number. They made their own custom code for this. Now I can select this entire range and tell Excel to look for that common thing and it will fill it all the way down. So I've selected my cells, I'm on the home tab and I'm gonna go fill but I'm gonna click that drop down to click flash fill. Now watch what happens on my screen. Notice that it read and it just copied that down. It's the same number or the discount code formatting that we had. It just filled it in for me.